Welcome to our first video segment we like to call Dare to Play. We'll be introducing you to amazing games. To start things off, we dare you to play Gloom. Gloom is a card game with a dark twist. It is brought to us by Atlas Games and is designed to be played by two to four players. The goal of the game is to make members of the family of misfits miserable beyond reason before helping them to pass on. Each Gloom core set contains 20 character cards divided into four families. Castle Slogar, a family of Frankensteinian scientists headed by Professor Helena Slogar, who could not bear to live without her husband and daughter, so she brought them back. And with the help of the gravedigger, Elias E. Gore is currently crafting the perfect future groom for little Melissa. Hemlock Hall is the home of the Wellington Smith family, including the possessed twins and older sister Lola, who is a bit of a wild child. Their father, Lord Wellington Smith, is the head of the household, and he is assisted in raising the children by Nanny Goody Czar and Butterfield the Butler, who have their own dark plans for the children. The murderous family of Blackwater Watch consists of the Old Dam, who is intolerant of anyone who speaks out against her, the handyman Willem Stark, who assists the Old Dam in her murderous exploits, the Old Dam's favorite serial killer niece, Angel, newly adopted cousin Mordecai, and Balthazar, the family dog who sometimes sticks his nose where it doesn't belong. The final family along for this twisted adventure is the family of carnival freaks of Dark's Den of Deformity. Headed by ringmaster Darius Dark, this family of unremarkable misfits consists of Samson O'Toole, the bearded man, Thumbelisa, the tiny opera singer not known for her size but for her talent, or lack thereof, Alessandra Deville, a lady covered from head to toe in tattoos, but who is too shy to show them off, and finally, the creepiest clown ever to be seen, Mr. Giggles. The most common type of card in Gloom is the modifier card. These cards are placed on top of characters to increase or decrease their self-worth through negative and positive number icons called pathos points along that left-hand side of each modifier card. Cards such as Contracted Consumption and Felled Out of the Well are designed to make characters suffer at the hands of fate and are perfect to play on characters in your family making it easier to assist them in passing on to the next life. Not all modifiers are negative. There are also pleasant modifiers such as Had a Picnic in the Park and Slept Without Sorrows that give characters a reason to continue to live by increasing their self-worth. Some modifiers also contain special icons on the right hand side called story icons. These icons sometimes affect when timely deaths and events can be played. Modifiers may also contain special effects which affect the player who controls the character they are played on and not always the player who plays the card as modifiers can be played on any living character. Event cards differ from modifiers in that they are not played on top of a character, but are instead put into effect directly from a player's hand, then discarded as soon as the effects resolve. Event effects range from swapping characters' modifiers to bringing a character back from the dead. They also look slightly different from modifiers. They have a gray text box with red text. The fourth and final type of card is the untimely death. These cards are used to allow a character with negative self-worth reach life's final destination and pass on. They are placed on top of a character like a modifier. Some include pathos points like a modifier but cannot be covered up. Once an untimely death is placed on a character, that character is considered dead and usually stays that way until the end of the game when a family's self-worth is calculated and the winner is decided. Their appearance differs from modifiers and events in that they have a gray text box but black text and tombstones in the upper and lower corners. Untimely deaths can only be played on characters with a negative self-worth score unless the special effect states otherwise. Some untimely deaths are affected by what story icon is showing when a character dies.
The game starts with each player choosing what family's fate they will take into their own hands. Each player then draws five cards, and the player who has had the most miserable day begins their turn. If it cannot be agreed upon who goes first, the owner of the game begins their turn, and play proceeds clockwise. Each turn consists of three parts, two actions and a draw phase. During the first action, a player can play any card in their hand whose special effect does not prevent them from doing so. Cards played as a first action can be modifiers, untimely deaths, or events. The second action of a player's turn goes much like the first, but has an extra restriction. Players cannot play untimely deaths during their second action unless an effect allows them to do so. Cards played during the first or second action resolve before play continues. The third and final part of a player's turn is the draw phase. This is where a player draws cards until the cards in their hand total their current draw limit. The standard draw limit is 5 cards, but that can be affected by special effects of certain modifier cards. The turn moves to the next player as soon as the previous player draws their cards. The game proceeds this way until the game ends. The game ends when all the characters in a single player's family die. Players total up the visible pathos points on all their dead characters, and the player with the lowest score wins.